This is the DMT One to One Show, episode 43, on the 15th of January 2014, a feature on the new YouTube channel Transmitter. Hello everyone and welcome to the DMT One to One show where we chat about the most interesting projects happening in the digital music industry and uh, this week it's a real pleasure to be at the Transmitter Studios in King's Cross uh, and uh, I'm here with uh, Jeff Taylor who is the Chief Executive at the BPI and uh, uh, William McGilvery, Head of Content and Programming at Love Live. So hi William, how's Hello. it going? And all right, yeah, hey, Jeff. Well, thanks. Hi. How's it going, all good? All good, all good. Yeah, great. Glad to be here. Awesome, it's really good, uh, good to have you here and uh, so... We can see big T's here everywhere. So uh, Transmitter is a project that launched uh, uh, in 2013. So uh, first of all, what is Transmitter? Uh, well, in a nutshell, it's a, it's a multi-genre music channel for the YouTube generation. So we've, we've created a, a channel uh, which we launched in, uh, well, November, hard launched in November of last year, November the 11th. Uh, it's, been, uh, it's been live on YouTube for, for just about two months now. Yeah. Um, and it's really that in a nutshell. It's, it's a multi-genre music channel. Uh, it's focused on, on kind of the best of British music. So it's a, it's a, it's a music channel with a very um, British out look and tone of voice but it also has a an international remit um jeff will probably tell you that you know what we're aiming to do with the channel is to take you know british music to a a much uh, broader international audience which is obviously why youtube is its first home um transmitter as a music brand however has other aspirations to grow outside of youtube but youtube is obviously a a vital home for us um and will remain you know sort of core to the the sort of the channel strategy if you like moving forwards um when we say multi genre it's about covering all the best assets um, facets of, of British pop music right now so um, it has quite a broad remit in terms of its uh, its its music policy if you like yeah. um, but I actually think that's one of its strengths and one of its benefits because um, I do strongly believe and I think you know a lot of that can be backed up by you know other people's opinions and data that YouTube is a is a place, particularly for music, that you either go super niche or you go super broad. And I think it, what's interesting about Transmitter and the opportunity that we have for the channel is to bring in lots of different fans and lots of different audiences to a to a hub. And, and Jeff, uh, so the, where did they come from? Uh, you know, did you guys uh, go to Love Live or the other way around? How did it how did it happen? Well, we were already working with Love Live because obviously uh, at the BPI we also run the Brits. So as well as running BPI, I'm chief executive of the Brits, and. Um, the idea was something that we had been working on uh, for a little while, and it stems from, I think, our perception that music was no longer that well served by television in the UK. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we've, we'd been in discussions at BPI with broadcasters, uh, particularly the BBC, for quite a long time, trying to encourage them that they should put more music on primetime television. And there's a very conservative attitude amongst commissioning editors at uh, TV stations with regard to music. And what has tended to happen over the last few years is you're left with shows like Later on the BBC, which is a fantastic show and a really great outlet for music, but it's on, you know, as implied by its name, pretty late. Uh, and there aren't too many others. You know, there are a few chat show slots but really music has has almost been sort of moved to the margins of mainstream television mm -hmm. but if you think back uh, and, and i'm not trying to suggest that we're going to reinvent the way the world was but if you think back um to you know 80s 90s etc music had a much more um uh, prominent role on television and we certainly believe that organizations like the bbc have a duty to sort of reflect what's going on culturally in the country so we've been trying to encourage them that that's what they should be doing but it was an uphill struggle and we feel that um fans want somewhere they can go to find out about new music youtube is that place but it's not that organized and actually picking up on will's uh, comment earlier i think music fans these days are really eclectic you know they have really eclectic interests in music and there are youtube channels obviously you know for individual artists and and some very successful channels that aggregate content but they tend to be a little bit niche in the sense they concentrate on one genre of music alone uh, typically and we felt there was real scope for a mainstream music channel for british music of course and uh, looking at the uh, you know the objectives for a uh, transmitter of course we're talking about a scope that is uh, broader than just youtube but it starts here so uh, you know starting uh, in 2013 what were your objectives then and have they evolved uh, since you launched okay well I, I wouldn't say our objectives have changed since launch because we're only really? as will yeah. said we're only two months in yeah, um, yeah. but Early the, days. The, the objectives from a from a bpi perspective um were very much about creating a new platform to promote british music so that's yeah. something we do with 
with the Brits, obviously, and actually, you know, this year we're doing some exciting new things with the Brits, uh, which will be announced soon. Uh, and we're trying to open up the Brits to a broader audience. But that is an award show, which is kind of one moment in the year. And we felt that there was an ongoing need for a platform that could uh, use, I suppose, the power of, of bigger artists to bring people in and introduce them to newer British artists and help, you know, help music fans find new artists and new music they're going to go and love and learn about the artists. So that's really our goal. It's to promote British music, both in the UK and more widely. Yeah. And we're just at the start of that journey. That, that's exactly it. And I think, you know, coming back to, to Jeff's point in terms of aspiration, I think <clears throat> Jeff really hits, it, hits the nail on the head when he said um, uh, that, you know, we want to use... The, the more established and familiar uh, and successful, uh, you know, uh, acts and artists, you know, uh, in British music to, to, to help to engender and introduce and, uh, and in fact endorse, you know, newer and more up and coming acts and artists. So, so it's a kind of almost a, a collaborative effort, if you like. Um, and, and just innately, it's, it's a sense of, you know, if you come to a channel, you know, you bring in a significant audience with a, as I say, with a top tier artist, and yet sure. there is that opportunity to discover, you know, within the, 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 the channel journey if you like you know sort of newer and more interesting acts that, that, that you may not have discovered before well and I think philosophically it was quite interesting I mean you asked us about the partnership with Love Live and so the idea for the channel um, came from the BPI because we have a group of digital executives from the labels that we uh, we talked to and this idea came out of that group uh, and then we you know, had a shot at doing it and we were going to partner with a, a major technology company to do it and we've ended up doing it on our own. Um, but one of, the, one of the things that attracted me to work with Love Live was that Will's vision was very much that this should be curated by artists. This should be artist-led and this should all be about artists, not so much talking about their own music, but talking about the music that they love right. and introducing, you know, artists speaking with authority and passion about other people's music that is important to them. And I really like that and I think fans are much more interested, frankly, in what Tiny Temper may have to say about the other artists he loves than hearing it from the Brits or from the BPI or, or anyone else. And so this is very much an artist-led channel. Yeah, and, and the ideas of obviously uh, curation and, and, and collaboration is, is, is something which is innate to both the YouTube platform and, you know, YouTube users, viewers, you know, or, you know, Gen C, if, if you, if you want to go that far and start calling them by that, that sort of psychographic, you know, kind of, uh, uh, idea of what a, of what a, a digital native now is, you know, and, and in fact, I quite like that idea itself. The idea of Gen C being not so much driven by, you know, age demographic, you know, are you a, you know, 25 to 34 year old, you know, man who spends money on music, you know, we're, we're, we're sort of in the digital world, we're moving away from that and actually looking at something which is more broad, you know, it's not defined by demographic, it's defined by how people use and engage with content. And I think Gen C answers some of those questions. And I think it's interesting for us as a, you know, a, well, it's interesting for me as a, as a programmer and a creative content to, to, to sort of, you know, uh, you know, create something, create a platform, create a channel with that, with that sort of mindset in, in mind. And, and, you know, so I think that that's partly where that idea came from. I mean, we've always played with the idea in, in various other formats and, and kind of concepts in uh, both at Love Live and in my past where, you know, it, it's become more apparent over the past sort of 10 years, 12 years that, you know, less and less the arbiters of taste are, you know, uh, your, your big, you know, publishers or uh, your big kind of music brands, if you like, less and less are they becoming important to uh, the, uh, the Gen Z audience. And, and, you know, actually a sense of, um, you know, the authenticity uh, of, a, of an artist's voice is actually much more valuable uh, and valued by that type of audience, as is obviously recommendation from, from friends and peers, you know, but I think also the artist is within that mix and, and, and has a very strong voice. Um, and that's definitely something that we're really trying to, that idea idea of curation from the artist and, and endorsement from the artist is something that we try and infuse throughout all the formats that we do on the channel, um, whether it's a simple uh, one of our live formats, which we'll, we'll talk about shortly, whether that's the positioning of the interview that we will have with the artist right through to something which is very specific around curation, which is our series of top threes, which we do with our artists. So yeah, no, it's still something we're very passionate about and, and very keen to keep as, uh, you know, kind of almost a USP for the channel. Sure. And uh, of course, growth is a uh, uh really important for any YouTube channel, you know, we're all looking at, uh, at growth, uh, but it's actually hard to come by, even if uh, uh, yes, you are a relatively well-known artist, it's, it's not instantaneous. Uh, it is not. And so uh, how do you feel like you're going to approach that that growth and, and how you're going to achieve it, essentially? Well, I, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll speak to this first if you want, but I mean, yeah, we're, we're two months in and, and uh, you know, it's it, it's the most difficult thing to do on YouTube is, is find your audience. Um, uh, we're also trying to, we're very much... Um, 
uh, of the belief that a, a channel such as this needs to grow organically in a sense that we want the audience, the subscribers that come to the channel to be, a, you know, real and valued audience that are going to stay with us and, 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 and stay on that journey. I mean, what, one of the things that we are currently doing, um, because obviously we are, you know, very early days and we are a, an unknown brand effectively at the moment, really. Um, so, you know, one of the things that we're doing is we're working very closely with the music industry uh, and the artists themselves to find interesting new ways to effectively cross promote the content and that is of course an opportunity that that, that youtube gives you um and its structure and its networking you know sort of opportunities but um it, you know taking it a, a step further um as well as obviously kind of you know being um you know collaborating with the artist to ensure that the correct social messages are, are, are pushed at the right time and that their their marketing is 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 kind of keyed into our releases and our release schedule uh, but above and beyond that it's actually within the formats itself as well so you know some of the early and very successful experiments that we've already done are the kind of the 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 part one part two video so we're where we will take, uh, we'll work with an artist on a or a band on an idea, um, where effectively the, the the first part of the video will sit on their channel, you know, um, which, which already has X hundred thousand subscribers, and then we annotate out to part two, which sits on transmitter. So just just a, a very a simple and effective way to bring you know one set of audience over to you know over to another channel, and it's it's proved very effective. I mean, we, we did something with um, Little Mix, we did some uh, some Christmas fun with Little Mix uh, just before. Christmas and we we did a part two, part one part two video with them and it's been you know it's been great for us so so that's something that we will continue to pursue and I think it's 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 essential in the early days of a of, of a of a you know sort of a new channel a new brand that they that we remain open to those opportunities and possibilities as much as possible and it also of course it feeds into our idea of being more collaborative and being more um, you know sort of cross promotional and, and sharing content I think it's all in that mix um, and and you know really important for growth. And Jeff, uh, Will was mentioning uh, the importance of artists actually being part of the picture. So how has the industry responded to the launch of Transmitter, both from a major and an independent perspective? Very well, I think. Uh, we've had some great artists with you know, the support of the labels in the first couple of months. I think the thing I'm most pleased about is the quality of the content has been fantastic. So you know, a lot of uh, session performances, which have been really high quality, uh, a lot of really interesting interviews and lots of different formats. And obviously, you know, uh, Will mentioned earlier that we're going to be moving on to new formats like live formats uh, quite soon so uh, we should talk about that exactly. in a minute but uh, I think all of the majors have been right behind it which has been great um, you know we launched just before Christmas which is sort of a challenging period so we're now waiting for it to speed <laughs> up again in the music yeah. industry because it does a little bit of a lull just, you know uh, uh, there are not a lot of, lot of artists available between the middle of December and uh, <laughs> the middle of January yeah. Uh, yeah. you know everyone needs a break so it's been a, a quieter period but as the release schedule gets busy again um, you know we uh, are very confident that the labels will continue to support us and you know we've had uh, you know indie artists like Dren John and you know we are obviously talking to all our indie labels about it yeah. It's, uh, we have quite a, uh, an eclectic mix of, of artists on there, you know, and I, hopefully that will become one of the attractions of the channel mm. that, you know, you may be a pop fan who doesn't generally listen to indie music, but you're going to find it and yeah. you may just get introduced to artists that you otherwise you know, wouldn't be exposed to. Exactly. And, and so it's important that we have the spread of labels behind it and we're working hard to achieve that. Yeah, sure. And, and looking at the formats, of course, you just launched with uh, uh, live is a big component for the channel right now. You know, yeah. you have a, quite, a, quite a lot of live videos. Uh, mm. You have uh, a few other uh, interview formats, mm. uh, you know, even sketches and, and stuff like that. So, yeah. so how do you structure that schedule and uh, uh, how do you also approach artists to get on board with different types of maybe fun content that you might want to, might want to uh, get out there, which may not be traditional ways yeah. of promoting yourself on YouTube? Yes, well, I mean, uh, how, so I guess the first question was how do we st structure the schedule? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, it's, you know, um, by design, it's very driven by artist schedules yeah. and, and artist um, uh, release schedules particularly. Um, we do try as much as possible to ensure that the... Um, that the content falls, you know, within kind of, you know, sort of periods of time where there is, you know, it, it's both of value to the artist and to us, it, of value to us, because obviously around those promotional cycles there, there's more visibility around that artist, more awareness of what they're doing. So, so it helps us as, as much as it helps the, uh, 
the, the, the label an artist. And, and regularity um, is a big thing on the internet. I mean, I know it as a podcaster, you know, I have to yeah. get this show out every week otherwise. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 and actually that's why we, we're, we're here sat in the studio because, because one of the, one of the first things that I think we said, we said to, to, to ourselves when we, we started to build this channel together was we, we know it needs a daily refresh. We know it needs, you know, sort of a, a continuous flow of content. We know that that's what, you know, YouTube audiences expect and, and want. Um, and, and we need to build the fire and keep giving people reasons to come back um, so you know the, the, one of the most kind of simple and elegant ways of doing that and we see a lot of channels you know that you know and, and actually we say a lot but you know there really isn't that that many music channels on YouTube at the moment uh, frankly um, you know and I think that although it's known for being a music source there aren't really channels you know um, or entities or brands if you like uh, there's a few and obviously you know we all know who they are and they're you know they're, they, they're, they're successful but um, we think that this is Partly a USP, having this having this uh, this facility, which, as Jeff and I mentioned before, is, is ready to go live. Uh, so from February, we will be uh, broadcasting live from here twice a week, um, and yeah, we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, but really, it's the studio that facilitates the schedule because it allows us to, well, you know, effectively have a space that we can play in, yeah. um, that we can obviously provide as a resource to to the labels themselves. Because often, you know, I've I've, I've I've been, you know, producing or involved in producing content for nearly 15 years now, and more often than not, it's it's location that is 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 often such an issue. It's like, God, where are we going to do this? You know, have we got the fee for the location? No, we haven't. You know, we're going to find somewhere for free upstairs room in a pub. You know, in a yeah. park. What the fuck are we doing? So, you know, it's like, you know, I wanted to avoid all that by having a a, a hub, if you like, you know, that that people can come to. Um, I mean, 90% so, so of my shows are on Skype, schedule. so. 90% hmm? of my shows are done on Skype. So. Yeah, 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 exactly. yeah. yeah. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, no, it's just, you know, yeah. like when, you're, when you're dealing with... You Live know, music. You when you're dealing with top-tier artists and, 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 and busy schedules, you, you need to make it as easy as possible for, for, for the labels to, and, and management to, to be able to, you know, facilitate what we need. So here we are. Basically. Absolutely. You're talking about live, so uh, your setup is pretty much ready, as you were saying. And uh, how are you planning to? That that live is kind of a difficult thing to uh, work yourself into because uh, I feel like uh, unless you're, it's sometimes there's this, you know, people have the. Uh, image that unless you're U2 or Lady Gaga or some, somebody like that, it's going to be very hard to pull an audience for mm -hmm. a live stream on, online. Mm -hmm. You know, how, how do you think you're going to find your audience that's going to actually come by and, 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 uh, and watch the show on a regular basis? Well, um, it's a good question. Um, we uh, are we, we're completely aware of the challenge of, of live. I mean, one of, one of our specialties as a business love live is is live streaming <laughs> um and which you know we've done hundreds over the past four years so so that's one of the reasons why we're comfortable with the format if you like and we're comfortable with producing live content and when we talk about live by the way we're not just talking about live performance we are creating formats yeah. uh within the studio that are presenter driven presenter led um and you know we're i suppose from a if you're talking about sort of volume if you're talking about viewership at the moment um we're quite humble in the fact that we know that we're not going to get huge numbers on the live streams to begin with. What we do, the reason why we're doing live is because we want to eventually, ultimately create appointment to view content. Because I think that that's where YouTube is moving to, uh, although not, not obviously completely, but there is a definite movement towards appointment to view. Um, that live is an important facet of what what YouTube do, and we work very closely with YouTube, and they're very excited about this, this opportunity. Um, more than any of that, though, I think what live does is it creates an in-the-momentness which is unrepeatable in VOD. No matter what you do, no matter how spontaneous your VOD content is, it's VOD content, it's pre-record. And I think what we want to create with, with Transmitter, and I think you know one of the aspirations that we haven't yet reached as far as our content is concerned, is that edge, that slight, I wouldn't say danger, but you know, that's that yeah. anything can happen kind of feeling. And also one of the things that we know about... Um, our audience, if you like, or at least the audience that we aspire to to, to be a part of, um, is that there is a fear of missing out. There is a sense of, you know, I, I need to be there. I want to be there. I want to be a part of that. Um, and on top of all of that, live gives you great social um, opportunities. You know, we want this channel to be fully interactive. We want this channel to be as much owned by the audience as it is by 
the industry or by the artists. So we really want the audiences to get involved and collaborate and communicate and throw ideas at us and just throw crazy stuff. And, you know, we're incorporating them in so many ways from having people in the studio right through to obviously Twitter call outs and questions to the artist. And we'll have Google Hangouts within the studio. So Google Hangout will be a part of a live format as opposed to a Google Hangouts where, which is, I think, what some people have, or most people have seen so far. So there are all those kind of aspects to it. And it just feels like, why shouldn't we do it as well? You know, like we expect the VOD content to, to provide us with the views. We expect the live content to provide the excitement and the, the danger and the, and the, the thrill of it, really. Yeah. Um, and hopefully that will communicate within the VOD content that we provide off the back of the live shows as well. Because, you know, let's be honest, it's going to be rough and ready and it's going to be live and it's going to be in the moment and there are going to be things that go wrong and Stuff that's all valid and cool, yeah, you know? That's the kind of thing that you want kids that go back to school the next day and, and sort of talk about what happened. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It's that's exactly that. I think the unexpected is really important and, you know, people love live music <laughs> yeah, yeah, people exactly. love you know live exactly. chats with artists where anything can happen I think the artists will have a lot of fun with it yeah. which is important yeah, and those absolutely. opportunities on mainstream mainstream television you know they are few and far between now so yes we'll have a small audience to begin with we absolutely recognise that but we're trying to build something here yeah. and you know we believe that over time having live content as well as all the VOG content high quality in lots of different formats will make it a really engaging place to come yeah and unique, you know, we, we, we don't see any other music channels out there doing this on a regular basis and we want to be the first. So, so that's exciting to us. Absolutely. And, and you were talking about presenter led approach as well. That, that makes sense when you're talking about live, because that means that people are going to be willing to tune in if they like the presenter time and time again, even mm -hmm. if they might not particularly like that band that is on that week. Uh, absolutely. You know, that's vital. And of course we see, you know, most of the, the, the most successful, you know, kind of YouTube content creators are, are one, one personality driven formats or channels. And we're very, you know, sort of keen to, to kind of harness some of that energy and, and passion. Um, we, we, we're not ready to announce yet, but we have some fantastic presenter talent, um, which we're bringing to the live formats. Um, they're YouTube natives and they're, they're very, you know, sort of well, well versed within the world of YouTube. And I think that's really going to give us a, an even stronger tone of voice as we move forward. Absolutely. Sure. And uh, looking at, uh the YouTube channel, and you were talking about, you know, growing outside of that as well. You also have a website, uh, which is on uh, transmittertv.com. Is that right? Uh, now you're asking. It, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's trans. I thought it was tra it's, yeah, transmittertv.com. Yeah, that sounds oh, yeah. right. Yeah. And uh, and so, uh, you know, you have to plan plans to grow that as well alongside the YouTube channel, so that you can sort of grow your own audience that is not linked to, to I, th I think long term I mean the focus yeah. for now is really on on the YouTube channel yeah. but uh, we hope that over time we're growing a brand here yes. uh, and we do envisage you know the possibility of future collaboration with broadcasters people like that so mm. you know th this is th we're trying to grow um, a tone of voice mm. an identity um, and a connection with an audience which then once that is built I think obviously we'll want to connect in different ways so uh, I would say it's there because you don't want to just exist on on YouTube I think you need to have a presence on the web and you need to be able to say some other things uh, in a kind of website format that you wouldn't necessarily do on a YouTube channel yeah. so it's there but yeah. I think that will grow that will have greater emphasis as time goes on and for yes, now absolutely. most of the focus is on the YouTube side yes absolutely yeah. Talking about, uh, you know, of course, BPI, music industry organization, we need to talk about sales as well. So uh, uh, how uh, are you currently helping our artists that are on Transmitter uh, shift some copies or, you know, link uh, uh, viewers to their site or to uh, retail outlets where people can buy music? And is there a plan to do more al along those lines? Well, certainly one of the things that uh, we talked about uh, in the design of the channel were, uh, was I was very keen to see much better integrated click to buy um, because I just feel like it's always been annotated so horribly on YouTube. You know, it's kind of there somewhere down in the kind of description underneath the video and you can yeah, barely see buried it. Buried under it the fold. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you could barely see it. And, and, and we felt that that was a bad consumer experience and that if you're enjoying some music by an artist, it should be simple. If mm. you want to buy it, it should be simple to buy. Mm. So, you know, th th there are annotations in our videos that allow you to click to buy and allow you to subscribe really easily. That's right. uh, you know, there's some more technical integration work to, to enable that on mobile as I understand which is a, a YouTube issue yep. uh, to fix so we're waiting on that which will help because obviously sales are increasingly going mobile for that's our right. business yeah. uh, that's something we need them to fix so please YouTube fix it <laughs> um, yeah. but uh, you know yeah. that, that obviously we want to try and promote sales but 
it, that isn't the primary focus. The primary focus is introducing artists to a new audience. And if we do that successfully, then I think sales will follow. And the whole kind of um, what is a sale debate is very uh, active in the music industry at the moment because a lot of people are moving into streaming. Uh, I'm a big, a big advocate of streaming. Um, we've worked very hard when we announced our 2013 figures, even though you don't get streaming data oddly quite as fast as you get sales data, uh, we wanted to present the full, full picture and the picture of the market without streaming looks very different to the picture of the market including streaming already and it's growing extremely fast. So I don't care if people watch a transmitter video and go on to stream it on Spotify. Uh, if they're streaming on YouTube, frankly, you know, they may go and watch the, the promo video of that artist and that's then going to generate some money for the artist because there are deals behind uh, you know, YouTube uh, with the labels that make sure artists get paid when their videos are played. So it doesn't really matter how they go on to further engage with that artist but we do need to make it easy for fans and that's what we're trying to do through the channel yes absolutely sure looking at the selection process as well uh, so uh, how does an artist that is uh, sort of in, in development go about uh, getting in touch with transmitter and you know do you guys keep uh, of course I'm, I'm sure you know the, the people that work here uh, keep in touch with people like drowning sound or pitchfork or all those tastemakers and, yeah, and try and discern what what is really trending and what, what they should have here well, that's absolutely right, and, and, and I'm sure there's a, uh, an easy way to get in touch via the website. If you're a developing artist out there that feels you should be on the channel, uh, you know, do contact us mm. at Transmitter. But yeah. um, we are in touch, obviously, with lots of indie labels as well as the major labels. Um, we, they contact us about developing artists uh, that they have, and you know, they pitch artists into us. But editorially, the team uh, at Love Live, are, they're always looking out for what's new and what's interesting, and trying to make sure that you know, we have established artists that will draw an audience, but also you know, artists you may never have heard of but are really fascinating I mean for example I'm going to sound now like I know nothing about music but I found out about Chloe Howe through Transmitter right. when she was first on there and I think she's wonderful yeah. you know and, and maybe it's just because there's only so much time in the day etc you don't necessarily find out about every artist particularly when they're up and no. coming yeah. um, it's, it's but impossible. you know the, the great thing on Transmitter is you find Chloe Howe right next to Tiny Temper right next to other major artists and I think you know that is something which you don't generally find as easily uh, or organised in that way that's on right. YouTube. No, exactly, because I mean, again, you know, with the, the algorithms, the way that YouTube works is you, you go to one particular artist, then you'll get, you know, related artists. So, you know, you'll have, you'll have artists, you know, that have been viewed by people who have also viewed that artist. So, you know, the breadcrumb trail there is not necessarily as, uh, distinct or, or interesting or of editorial value to to a user you know uh, who might actually come to the the transmitter channel and, and be taken to a a new artist off the back of a a tiny temper video and that's something that we obviously do very very much is you know at the end of every video we, we take someone to um you know the, the user journey is is annotated right at the end so it can take you to either a, a, a an artist that we think you'll like because you like tiny but it'll also take you to another piece of you know, hey you know check this out as well because this 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 girl's amazing kind of thing. So, so that's very much part of what we do, progr you know, programming wise with the channel and, and uh, you know, um, uh, but um, I think the next step for that, and, and something that is is a content aspiration that we we will continue to sort of strive for, is actually creating unique collaborations themselves. We have a format called the Hookup, and we've already done uh, we've already done two of those. Um, the first one we did with uh, uh, Gabrielle and uh, Rich Three Two. Um, we've got um, Eliza Doolittle and Will Hurd coming up, and we've got a few more sort of kind of in in sort of in process of being organised. But but that's a really for me that's a really important format for us to get away because because what that is is it's, it's kind of it, it, it's again it, it speaks of in, engendering or empowering that opportunity to happen i mean it, you know the charts are full of featureings and and, and collaborations and you know the, the 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 top 10 is driven by by you know the, the sort of the, the phenomenon of the featuring if you like so you know that's something that we're really trying to reflect in our own content yeah. and creating those opportunities for labels to to actually interact and come together you know over the channel yeah. or through the channel rather of course uh, well uh just uh, as, as an aside from, you know, of course, the transmitter is not a channel that is whose aim is to monetize the videos themselves. But uh, as some of the works in this in this world, uh, how do you how do you feel that part of YouTube is evolving and are artists seeing YouTube as a, as a new avenue to generate revenues or essentially are they just breaking even on the costs of making videos right now? I, I think the reality is that, that um, you know, sort of YouTube revenues are very, uh, you know, it's a very challenging model. Uh, at the moment. I don't think anyone's denying that. Um, some people obviously are doing incredibly 
well out of it and you can certainly do incredibly well if you know if you if you're able to create an you know Elvis the Fox moment or, or, or whatever um, so so certainly the opportunity is there to generate significant revenue um, I, I would say that uh, I mean I think you know uh, at the moment I think that the the consumer trend is not being reflected by the um, by the the, 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 the advertisers spe the advertisers spend if you like I apologize for the, the horrible rhyme there um, but yeah the, the it, it, that there is a there is you know the trend is clearly uh, you know to to uh, to online and mobile in terms of viewer habits and uh, and consumption and you know it simply is not the case that that uh, that the advertisers have really you know followed that trend if you like they're still dipping their toes I I think actually that's that's unfair much more than dipping their toes now they're they're going all in but they're still huge you know there's a huge disparity i think between yes. between trend and, and and spend and we've got to be encouraged by the growth rate um yeah. in, in terms of revenues from streaming Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, to be honest um to shake it up a bit i've always been a bit shocked by how little comes through to the industry from youtube yeah. uh given the billions of views of music videos that there are mm. And then I look at the industry figures at the end of the year and, you know, it's quite a small number, frankly, that comes through from video streaming in which, you know, YouTube is the dominant player. Uh, but it is increasing. And, you know, there are also new deals being put in place. So labels renegotiate with YouTube. I'm sure those are absolutely brutal uh, discussions on both sides, you know, but um, I'm a firm believer that over time, as advertising rates improve and as ad advertising inventories and volumes improve, as deals improve, it's going to contribute a huge amount yeah. uh, to the revenues for artists and for the industry. Absolutely. So it's, you know, we're all having to be a bit patient here. Um, you are, yeah. it's a bit of a leap of, leap of faith yeah. in the sense that, you know, quite often, I mean, frankly, you know, you commission content uh, for YouTube, particularly if you're creating, you know, original content like we are here. And yeah, to expect to get a sufficient in advertising revenues uh, to pay for it, at least in the short term, you know, that's, that will be pretty optimistic. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we're, there's a bit of a leap of faith for all of us here, but I think, you know, it's a great technology platform. It creates uh, many opportunities. Absolutely. And if we have faith and if we invest and if we create great content, ultimately it will pay off. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So uh, let's uh, end on a light note by asking you, I know it's a difficult question, but just to direct people if they're going on uh, Transmitter today, which is a youtube.com slash transmitter, uh, is there one or two sessions that have been produced in the last couple of months that you're, you're particularly uh, excited about, that you particularly loved, and you'd like to mention for people to go and check out right now? Yeah, well, I mean, my, my favorite so far, um, for, for different reasons, actually, I think um, the Ella, Ella Air session um, that we shot for as part of our class of 2014 uh, kind of tips for, you know, tips for the year, um, and it's actually picking up some very good numbers, uh, was just uh, brilliantly shot by our team they really captured her um there were some lovely moments and and some um, some really sort of you beautiful kind of you know just looked fantastic so I'm, I'm really proud of that one um so that's the one for um dig a little deeper um and then just for sheer sort of <laughs> i suppose chutzpah i think probably um uh the witch is doing a cover of all that she wants yeah. is another baby by by ace of bass which which again is is, is picking up some good numbers and, and actually that's another thing that we're, we're continuing to pursue is those kind of you know incongruous covers um which which is proving to be pretty popular on the channel um but i i absolutely adore that band and you know the the fact they had the the guts at such an early stage of the channel as well to come and do that for us um a kind of sort of laid down the gauntlet if you like for other bands and artists and we're, we're getting some pretty unique suggestions for covers now so, yeah, uh, so that's great. good yeah I know for me I, I mentioned Chloe Howell I love what she's done on the channel um, I also loved uh, it was a Rizzle Kicks um, sort of mucking about challenge oh the, oh, the cinema, cinema yeah cinema the cinema challenge, challenge. Well. yeah they're always good value that, that might just be because uh, I love those boys they, yeah. they they played a party for us actually um, uh, in the summer and they were amazing and uh, they're, they're just great fun and they're very talented so yeah yeah, uh, yeah, they're always and, great and they're, value. Yeah, they're very good fun. Yeah. So uh, I'd say check that one out. But to be honest, it, the great thing about Transmitter is there's a load of stuff where you can just dip in, and it's usually surprising and interesting. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, we, we we hope so. Um, yeah. So so uh, yeah, the, the, you know, there's loads of fun stuff. So check it out. That's great. Well, thanks so much, guys, for your time. Cool. And uh, thanks so much for listening. Uh, the DMT One to One Show goes out every week. You can you can check it out on digitalmusictrans.com, and you can follow the show on at DigiMusicTrans. Thanks so much for listening. Have a great week and until next time.
Thanks for listening to the DMT One to One show, and remember to check out digitalmusictrends.com for our weekly news show.